Hi everyone, welcome to Maths World UK. I'm James Grime and today I'm speaking with Vinny Katatia. Vinny is a maths educator here in the UK and he's going to show us a different way of representing numbers. He's going to show us how to represent numbers using a pair of shoelaces. It's kind of unusual and I think you're going to enjoy it. But first, Vinny showed me a, a clever way of doing some multiplications. One of the things I learned in India early on was you can do multiplication with your fingers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the hands and the thumb is gonna be a six. So on each hand, the thumb is a six, next finger seven, and then eight, nine, and the little finger of the pinky is a 10. Is that okay? Okay, okay so I have yeah. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And of course, you need to know your time tables up to five. Okay. Okay. Now, I'm not saying this is the way children should be taught it, but I just find it interesting that it even works. So let's say we do seven times eight. Mm -hmm. So put your hands up with the thumbs hanging down. And then you take the seven on one of your hands and eight on the other hand. So remember the thumb is six, the next one seven, and so, and join them up. Yep. Okay. Now, once you've joined them up, these thumbs are dangling down. You then turn all the lower fingers together so it looks like two deer kissing each other. <laughs> okay. So here they had these two deer kissing each other. Now, here's how the multiplication is going to be simpler. First of all, how many fingers are all joined, or how many digits, I should say, because there's fingers and thumbs. So these are all the ones joined up. All the ones that are joined over here, yeah. So I've got five. Yeah, five. Now, each of those, because we've got 10 fingers in total, each of those is worth 10 points, let's say. So you've got five of them, so you set aside 50. Okay, that's a simple multiplication, keeps 50 aside. Now here's why it's easier to do this multiplication. You're left with these antlers. So on one hand, I've got three antlers, and on the other, I've got two. So this is a multiplication you have to do now, three times two. <laughs> Which is six. Which is six. And then we set aside the 50, so you add it to that. So 50 plus six is 56. 56. And it turns out seven times eight is 56. So you'll say this is really convoluted and long, but the point is that I wanted to know why it worked, not just it works. And that's one of the lovely things that I like about mathematics. I mean, again, to use a fancy word, we can mathematize. So it's not just finding one instance, but recognizing it's part of a pattern. It's not just multiplication. What's also interesting is you just think about numbers. You know, we use them for counting and now we multiply, we can divide and so on. But even numbers can arise in different ways. Have you heard of, for example, something called Conway's Tangles? No, I have not. John Conway is an amazing mathematician. And I was very fortunate once when he did a session with students on these tangles. So up until then, I thought, you know, numbers only arise from measurement like slope or how many objects there are or the area of something. And he shared this method. But if people want to, I mean, if you're making a video, if people want to pause the video and get a pair of shoelaces, if people want to do it at home, what really works well is to get two skipping ropes and have four human beings. So here's how it starts. If it looks like this equal sign, that's zero. It's perfectly balanced. That's the number zero. And here's how you create the number one. So I take the bottom right corner and you move it over the adjacent string or strand, whatever you want to think of it as. If you do that, that's adding one. So now this has become plus one. If I did it one more time, so if I take the bottom right and move it over the top right, that is the tangle, which is plus two then. So does that make sense? So I can keep tangling it more and more. So I do it one more time, that becomes plus three. Okay, so far? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So the tangles represent one, two, and three. Now you could say, could I do negative numbers? And the answer is yes, because just as taking the bottom right above the top right is plus one bringing it backwards would be minus one. And so you could see that you could untangle it and get back to zero. I found amazing is that here's this other move, which is suppose you rotate everything 90 degrees anti-clockwise. So I just took my original thing and I rotated it anti-clockwise. Mathematically, the move takes a number x to minus one over x. So that act of rotating the tangle 90 degrees takes a number to its negative reciprocal, if I was to use fancy terms. But it's easier just to think in terms of what it would do to a number. So I think we'd created the tangle three. So three would go to minus one third. Let's say I did this now, what would this number be? 
So you had minus one third, you've added yeah. one, so two thirds. There you go, so that's two thirds, okay? And I could do, I could add another one. So you can see it's getting more and more tangled. So what tangle is that now? Uh, so you added another one, so it's five thirds? It's five thirds, yeah. And so here's one question, and that's a question I'd like to leave for our viewers. What numbers can you get? You can definitely do one, two, three, and all the counting numbers, and you can do unwinding and all the negative numbers, negative whole numbers. Question is, can you get every fraction? And can you get anything else? So here's the game that Conway used to play with the students. What he'd do is he'd say, I've made 15 17 at home. Or in our case, what have we just made? We made five thirds. And so I, you know, he'd say, here are two different groups. And then you run a little race between two families, you know, as two or two groups who can untangle a given number the quickest. So what would you do if you had five thirds to untangle it? I could subtract one. Okay. So that means taking the top right and moving it. Okay, so subtract one. So five thirds take away one is two thirds. And then I'm going to subtract one again. So that is two thirds minus one. That's negative a third. Then I'm going to rotate it to get three. So that would become three. And then I can subtract and subtract and subtract. So I'll, I'll need to keep track of this. So that's minus one and then another minus one and another minus one. So it looks like it's got a bit more tangled, but if you've done the maths or if I've done the moves correctly, you know, I don't doubt your maths. Then, so here's what you do if you're at home and playing it, you just pull a little bit and lo and behold, you've got the zero. And here's another question. As I said, what I love about mathematics is it just raises more and more questions. You use some of the negative moves. Now, when Conway originally described it, he only gave the positive move for adding. So just plus one and the rotate, which sends, you know, X to minus one over X. And the question then is, can you still get any fraction using just those moves without using the minus one move. Here's the thing is whenever I see a mathematical problem like this, where the question is, can you get something? You can ask a further question, which is, do you have a good algorithm for doing it? Which means, is there a rule that you can automate so that everybody can use it? What I like is that a lot of mathematical questions like the one about the tangles, that's a challenge I'd like to leave for those who are interested is, can you get any tangle being any fraction. So can you get every fraction or not? And then if you do find such an algorithm, how efficient is it? You know, can you find a better one or a faster one? And the fact that writing numbers is where our first algorithm came from. You know, how do you come up with a method that anybody can carry out and so on? Now, if you ask somebody, you know, what is 763? They'll just write 763. They'll say, you know, that's 763. Here's what's interesting. The original algorithm, the Hindu Arab algorithm, it took a few hundred years before Europeans embraced it. So even though Al Khurizmi wrote this book on the Hindu method, it took a few hundred years. So even now we think that's a very basic algorithm. It's not that straightforward. And we've discussed many different ways of doing multiplication. What I find fascinating, and this is some of the mathematics I've looked at also is, do we have the most efficient algorithm for multiplication? And the answer is we don't know. So there are many different ways you can multiply two numbers, but we're still looking for a better way of doing it. And that's another fascinating aspect of mathematics. And even simple questions like how to count, how to multiply, we haven't yet sussed those out. Thanks to Vinny. If you're interested in more information about these Conway tangles, then we'll put some links in the description. We'll also put a link to Vinny's blog where he talks about other cool mathematical things. That's all from me for now. So I'll say stay curious. I'll see you next time.